According to the USGS, it's very likely in the next two decades, San Francisco will experience an earthquake higher than 6.0. The city of San Francisco encourages their residents to create emergency kits to be able to deal with situations such as that. Right now we're in the park side of San Francisco in front of the house of Judy Dito. She has created a kit exactly like this, an emergency kit. So let's go and see what she has. Hi, Judy. Hi, how are you? Good, good nice. to see you. Good to see you too. Do you want to show us your kit? Sure, come okay. on in. All right. One of the kits I have is one I made up for my car. Okay. One, it's pretty simple. It's pretty basic. This one was actually a pre-purchased one oh. um, that I always have in the car. It has your basic first aid, some food and water, and some emergency items. You can pick this up like at any hardware okay. store, a Costco even probably. Mm -hmm. I believe that's where we got this one. I also keep a blanket. Okay. I also have some other blankets because I have a two-year-old daughter, so I keep some in the back of the car. Okay. And she always has those with her. Okay. And then I just put together a simple backpack of, um, I'll just kind of go through it. I have some sweatshirts for us, mm -hmm. changes of clothes, mm -hmm. basic, basic toiletry needs, mm -hmm. and a um, pair of tennis shoes. Great. But in the back seat of my car, I have like a little basket that's things for my daughter. Mm -hmm. So it's always full with her to some toys, mm -hmm. some blankets. Just and that's just on a constant basis because she's in the car all the time. Right, right, right. <laughs> but that's useful yes, for exactly emergency for an emergency too. So it's all things she'd be familiar with if we had to be in the car for a longer period mm -hmm. of time for whichever mm -hmm. reasons. Mm -hmm. I really recommend you put in stuff that that you use and that you eat and that's relevant to you. Uh, even if you are reliant on a shelter, you'll want to bring a little something there that gives you the comfort of, you know, your, the things that are in your normal habits, that gives you the empowerment that you're going to be all right until uh, city services are kind of restored or alternate services can be put in place. So I, I think of it as, as uh, really just really taking care of yourself and having your stuff when you need it. So for starters, I have my water. Mm -hmm. I also have a collapsible water container, which will hold two and a half gallons of water, and I can um, drain my water heater actually. Oh, to start getting water out of this too, in, okay. in a situation that needs more water. Okay. Uh, high fiber cereal bars mm -hmm. works great for food. Um, this is a wonderful item. It is a battery. Well, it's a non-battery operated. You wind it up. Uh huh. It becomes a flashlight and your radio. Toilet paper, baby wipes. These are great for washing your hands, washing mm -hmm. whatever you need to wash. Antiseptic wipes also to so mm -hmm. clean any cuts. Mm -hmm. And then I have some just some food items um, that have a shelf life of at least six months to a year. Mm -hmm. Some soups, can opener, very important, you need that. Mm -hmm. I have some pastas, and so you don't deplete your water. Mm -hmm. Low sodium chicken broth. Okay. Or, a low, or a vegetable broth, but you, the key is you want to make sure it's low in sodium mm -hmm. because obviously the more salt you add to anything, it's going to make you thirstier. Mm -hmm. But it, again, it's something that can hold for a while mm -hmm. in your stomach. Mm -hmm. And I added some little Parmesan cheese just to <laughs> a little flavor. Yeah, you know. <laughs> um, you know, vitamin C packets to add to your mm -hmm. water just to keep your vitamins to your staying mm -hmm. healthy mm -hmm. during this time. Um, Walnuts, almonds, another item that will sustain longer. And then I have, you can also cook in your tomatoes mm -hmm. right into it, and mm -hmm. it's um, no salt added. Um, kidney beans, they're also high in fiber. Mm -hmm. Again, another filler. There are a lot of sources um, on the web that will help you find out what to do. Um, you can start with our website. It's sfgov.org slash sfnert. Um, but we're not the only source. There is a 72hours.org website. The Red Cross has a kit. Uh, I recommend that instead of downloading everything and then getting overwhelmed, that you just pick one and just start working it. Do a little bit at a time. And so um, any Google search of emergency preparedness supplies will get you to, to the end, which is actually completing the task of putting some supplies together. Huh. Just made it easier when I saw the list. I'm like, oh, it's so easy. Right. So I think at times people do think, oh my God, it's so much to think of. It's, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's hard to figure out first steps. Yeah. What do I to... need to do? So the steps are kind of right there for you. Mm -hmm. So it makes it easier. It makes it um, more, more concrete and, and accessible. Mm -hmm. So um, what would you say to San Francisco residents to encourage them? Start getting ready. 
start preparing. Um, even if you just take your list mm -hmm. and you start with a basic for your car or the basic for your family, just begin to get ready. That's the most important thing I think I could tell any San Francisco resident, any resident anywhere that has disasters mm -hmm. is to start getting prepared and just start baby steps. Mm -hmm. You know, one bag, start filling it up. And mm -hmm. once you start filling it up, you find out it's very easy. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, I like that. And, I like that. Right. and it's like going shopping. Mm -hmm.